Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be packing up some food for long-term storage. Um, I did a video on this Harvest Ripe freeze dryer a while back, and I told y'all that we were gonna package up some of the food in it. But I also wanna share with you some foods that you can package up that will keep almost indefinitely that you don't have to have any special equipment for at all. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that. Now I do have to work kinda quick because when you're dealing with one of these freeze dryers, the purpose of the freeze dryer is to remove all the moisture from the food and I don't know if you can see this or not but I've already got condensation around here as soon as you turn this thing off your food instantly starts reabsorbing moisture so since we have removed all the moisture out of it and that's what we're trying to fight with the freeze dryer is to get the moisture out of the food I got to get moving here I need a bigger kitchen. <laughs> now, whenever you're packaging up food, however you are doing it, even if you're just wrapping up a loaf of bread that you made, you wanna wash your hands really well and remove all the bacteria from your hands before you start packaging up food. Whether it's for long-term storage or you wanna keep your bread fresh as long as possible in the cabinet. Um, what I have here is about 10 pounds of ground beef that I cooked and crumbled and then I put it in the freeze dryer and dried it. And you can see it is very dry and very crumbly. Now I removed as much fat from this as possible because fat will um, degrade quicker than the meat. If you are packaging up food for long-term storage, one of the big things you wanna check is fat content. Now, um, <clears throat> some things that you can package that, you know, without having to have a freeze dryer, you can buy food that is already dry. Any kind of dry food can pretty much be packaged in Mylar, like I'm doing here. These are Mylar bags, and packaged up for long-term storage. And that's what you get when um, you order the stuff from Old Patriot Foods and Mountain House, things like that. Those are freeze-dried. And it's like this, you know, when it's 25-year food storage but you can buy a lot of stuff that is dry and package it up yourself, save yourself a ton of money, um, <clears throat> and have something for emergencies. And this is good for emergencies and for camping. And I don't wanna be one of those people who is um, kind of, preaching doom and gloom and trying to scare people. Preparing for winter and shortages and stuff has kind of always been a way of life where I grew up and it's been something that the women have done forever. You know, my granny canned and all my aunts and stuff, they all can. They all raise gardens and can so that they would have food in the winter. My granny had a can room, which was basically a closet in the interior of her house between the kitchen and the living room. And it was to maintain the temperature. There was no air conditioning. The interior room was dark and she put her can jars in that interior room to protect them from light. Um, there are a few things that will cause your food not to last. Moisture, which we took out with a freeze dryer, sunlight, and oxygen. And we also 
are going to take the oxygen out here and the mylar bags protect it from any kind of light and that that will keep it better longer you do want to use mylar bags or store your stuff in a dark place now heat affects how long it will keep so if you have a cool room that's obviously better now i'm crumbling this up so i can get a little bit more in each one of these bags and i prefer these mylar bags over other mylar bags they have a gusseted bottom which means they will stand up while you work with it and i said you have to work quick you do have to work quick and the oxygen absorbers i'm going to kind of tell you about them too because it's crucial that they are handled properly or they won't take the oxygen out of your food and then when you go to use it it will not be good anymore you can probably see right here i have a little bit of visible fat in this meat that's the only visible fat that i see in this and i'm actually going to take this out but there is some fat still in this my hands are getting a little bit oily so probably this would store for maybe 15 years in ideal temperature um, doing the best i can to package it up correctly get all the oxygen out of it and i have i think these are only like quart bags here but i'm putting two to two and a half pounds of pre-cooked hamburger in them now, once you open this to reuse it, you have exposed it to oxygen and it's going to start degrading. Now with the Ziploc bag, you can seal it back up, store it in your refrigerator once you've opened it and your oxygen absorber is no longer good and it will stay good for a while, but it's going to start reabsorbing oxygen and moisture. And once it gets that oxygen and moisture in it, it's gonna start to go bad like fresh stuff would. You can also, once you open this, you can reseal it and put a fresh oxygen absorber in it and keep it for a while longer. Or you can put it in a mason jar like I have up here and use one of these vacuum lids and seal it up with your vacuum sealer and keep it for a while longer. You also, if you want something that's reusable, you can um, store all of your freeze-dried stuff are your dry goods like we have over here that are shelf stable in mylar or I mean not in mylar in the mason jars and use your vacuum sealer to seal them up just put them in a dark room so that the light is not degrading them when you're packaging stuff up in the mylar it is kind of a good idea to fill the bags up and I'm re-crumbling this because I don't want big chunks in there that will mean that there's more oxygen in the bag and I want to get as much oxygen out as I can before I even put my oxygen absorber in there and it has to start working to take the rest of it out the crumbles are all going to have air in between them and that's what the oxygen absorber is going to do it's going to remove all that air I said that I don't want to be one of those people that is trying to scare people into preparing for the end of the world. Um, the Bible says that no man knows the hour or the day. And we have been waiting for Jesus' return since Jesus was here the last time. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't put stuff back to prepare for the end of the world, just to be prepared. And certainly with the shortages and things like that that we've had over the past, gosh, two and a half years, I think most folks can see that something is going on. I mean, we're continuing to see shortages. The economy is not doing so great. Um, you know, it's just... Things are not good. And I think unless you have absolutely had your head in the sand for the past several years, you know that we need to have some stuff put back so that when the next whatever it is happens, 
we're not left without food. And if you read the Bible, read Proverbs 31, the Proverbs 31 woman, she makes sure that she has stuff prepared to care for her family. She puts back for her family. If you look at Noah, he built an ark to save his family. Joseph, he put back for all of Egypt because he knew something was coming. And like I said, unless you've been literally had your head in the sand or been living in a cave for the past three years, you know that the world we live in is kind of changing. And we do need to have some stuff put back. And some people say, well, that's a lack of faith. Well, absolutely it is not. I mean, I hope that every bit of this is used for camping and just save money because the way things are going up, I bought this ground chuck for $1.99 a pound. The grocery store was having a weekly sale and that's the thing about putting stuff back, freeze drying it, or even these shelf stable goods that are already dry that you can put back. You can buy them on sale. And with inflation being what it is now, it's an investment. But I certainly don't think that it's a lack of faith to prepare. God's people have been preparing since we have been God's people. I mean, it's something that God teaches us to do. There's a season, a season to harvest, and you have to put back what you harvest. You know, would you really plant a garden and just let everything you don't eat lay there and rot? Of course not. I mean, that's just not, that waste is just not biblical and it's not right and it's not anything that God wants us to do. So, I hope, like I said, all this is used for camping and good things and not for a coming famine. But the government is certainly warning us of that. Uh, the FDA, for the first time in my life, has changed their guidelines for expiration dates. And if you Google how long stuff is good past the expiration date, you will find those new guidelines on the FDA's website. Um, they used to say stuff like canned goods. You could use them for, I think it was six months to a year past the expiration date. They said that um, ground beef and stuff like that in your freezer, use it four to six months. Um, got some visible fat there so I'm gonna leave that out and I'll use that in something here in the next few days anyway um, cereal cookies crackers stuff like that they would, were given that a couple of months past the expiration date now they have something on there for shelf stable foods their guidelines for shelf stable foods but what the FDA is now basically just saying about shelf stable foods is that shelf stable foods are good pretty much indefinitely. You can just use them for forever. They say that they will lose flavor, maybe taste stale, but as long as there is not visible signs of spoilage, a very foul smell or bugs or mold they're saying go ahead and eat it the same thing with canned goods and they are now saying frozen meat is good for much longer for years and they're saying it's going to lose flavor and um stuff but don't throw it out they even recommend if you have old hamburger meat in your freezer that's maybe been in there for a year or two to put sauce on it to cover the flavor. So the government is telling us not to throw away anything, even if it is past being good. Well, I, you know, that, like I said, that's something new. And they always had said, throw that stuff out. I know things are getting to the point that people are going to have to start saving that stuff. 
and um, gonna have to start keeping some of it maybe well past the expiration date if they if the government tells us to expect shortages where we have to eat that stuff then you can expect shortages and if the government is now telling us not to throw that out you might want to listen to that they know more about what's going on than the average person does okay anyway the oxygen absorbers they're going to take the rest of the oxygen out of here so then we're going to have this protected from the things that destroy it the mylar is going to protect it from the light the oxygen absorber is going to take the oxygen out and we have already taken all the moisture out this oxygen absorber will also get rid of any moisture that might happen to be left in it or might have gotten in it while I was packaging it. Now you have to work quickly with your oxygen absorbers. When they start to warm up, they are working. And once they get hot and then cold again, they're no longer any good. If you take your oxygen absorbers out and they're hard, that means they're not good anymore. They have been spent. So you want to make sure they're not hard. They should be very flexible. Now, as soon as I get them in here, I want to reseal this because my oxygen absorbers will go bad if they're not resealed. They'll soak up oxygen and they'll get hard. Normally, I would do this on my vacuum sealer, but I don't have room for it. So I'm going to do it on this one. Well, reseal it and the oxygen absorbers will actually suck what little bit of oxygen is left in this bag out of it or absorb it and they won't go bad because there's not not enough oxygen in there to really affect this many oxygen absorbers but you want to make sure you reseal it a good seal and you want to get it done quickly now we also want to seal these bags up quickly and I have this um, sealer here that came with my um, freeze dryer. If you don't have one of these, you can use a regular old iron and you can get one of these in a secondhand store for next to nothing. And I have used an iron to seal up mylar bags. It works great. Um, you want to use an old cutting board or something because it will make a mess on your countertop. Uh, it takes a little longer than one of these sealers, but it definitely works. And all you do on this is you press it down and the light should turn colors there. I usually do it a couple of times to make sure I got a good seal because while I sealed the um, Ziploc thing, that Ziploc seal is not going to be airtight. So you do want to seal it either with an iron or with one of these sealers. And this is an impulse sealer here. If you have any wrinkles in this part of your bag and your bag doesn't get sealed, your food will go bad. You have to make sure that seal is good. And if I'm using this, I'll do it a couple of seals across it, make sure I get it good. It is critical that you work fast once you get these oxygen absorbers in here. And I don't usually do more than five or six bags if I'm working alone because you can't seal them up fast enough to keep your oxygen absorbers good. So if you're working by yourself, five, six bags at a time. Once you get the oxygen absorbers in the your food, reseal your bag of oxygen absorbers. Don't leave them sitting. They won't be good anymore if you do. That's a really nice seal there. You can see there's no wrinkles in it. That's what you want. Now, I didn't have room to get out my cutting board, obviously, with all this stuff and show you how to do the iron, but I do want to show you kind of how to do that. Um, I use an old cutting board and when I seal them up, seal up my bags with the iron and the old cutting board, I'll lay the bag on the edge of the table or on the edge of the cutting board. You don't want to do this on your countertop. It'll ruin your countertop. I have an old cutting board and I just go along the edge of it a couple of times like this with the iron 
and it seals and I'll flip it over and do the other side just to make sure because like I said if you don't get a good seal your food will go bad so just do both sides with an iron and you can pick up one for five bucks um, check all your seals before you move on and start sealing more food make sure they're good I've got some wrinkles right here I don't know if you can see that or not but I have a solid seal up here and so this one's good and before you pack your food away leave it sitting on your countertop or on your table somewhere where you can see it for a day and make sure it kind of sucks down a little bit these oxygen absorbers that I just resealed in the plastic you can see the oxygen already leaving this bag it's already starting to get tight again or being absorbed it's not leaving it it's being absorbed your mylar bags should pull in a little bit um, this is some stuff that I did and you can see that it's kind of pulled in that won't always get super hard sometimes it will depending on what size oxygen absorbers you used in it um, this one you can definitely tell it's pulled down it's pretty flat up here you want to squeeze as much air out as you can because your oxygen absorber works better if you do that make sure you label everything with a sharpie put a date on it what it is because obviously you can't see what this is through the mylar and if you have to take stuff out in an emergency you don't want to have to um, open a dozen bags to find what you're looking for and you want to label about how much is in this like I said I had 10 pounds pre-cooked ground chuck so I've got about two pounds in each one of these bags that's a good amount to package up because it is going to cost you some money for the bag and it's going to cost you some money for the oxygen absorber so you don't want to package teeny little packages it's just not cost effective but if you had like 10 pounds in one of these mylar bags when you open it up if you don't have any way to reseal it to save it you're going to lose a lot but two pounds you know you can use two pounds of ready cooked ground chuck pretty quick um, I do want to show you some of the stuff that you can package up in the mylar or in these jars now if you use mason jars and you can get these attachments to go with any bag sealer any vacuum sealer and they take all the oxygen out of your mason jars that will last a very long time if you protect it from light now you need to do like my granny and store these in the middle of or in a closet somewhere where the temperature is going to be kind of constant you don't want it getting too hot because the heat will affect how long you can store it but you can do oatmeal quick or long cooking will last a very very long time if you store it in the mylar with the oxygen or in the jars it's not going to get bugs in it um, you know it's not going to have any moisture to cause mold and stuff like that cornstarch and sugar will pretty much last indefinitely sugar will last pretty much indefinitely anyway but you want to store it in something where it won't get bugs and it won't get moisture um, dried stuff stuff that has already been dried like stuffing mixes soup mixes um, any kind of ready-made soup mixes are a good thing these little packaged meals with the rice and the flavor in them you do want to be careful of fat now I said fat will destroy your food you want to be careful with fat if you're freeze drying your own food and you're storing it um, like if you were gonna make something that you wanted to store for a long time you wouldn't want to add the fat to it like if you were making some kind of stew or something don't put butter in it when you're making it or any other kind of fat for flavor because the fat will keep it from lasting as long um, check the contents of things you store for fat especially palm oils and stuff they don't store well uh, drink mixes you can store those indefinitely and I know there's not a lot of nutritional value there but you know imagine not being able to get food or possibly having to drink 
unfiltered water that maybe doesn't taste great, uh, adding a little drink mix to it will not only give you a caloric boost, but it'll kind of give you a moral boost, or a morale boost, not a moral boost, a morale boost. It will help your morale to have something with some flavor in it. Also, instant coffee. Instant coffee is freeze dried. You can store it, it will last indefinitely. And I sure don't want to face super tough times with no food without coffee. <laughs> um, a lot of these uh, meal substitutes check for the fat. Um, I haven't checked these and I was going to because I actually bought them to store. But this is a $25 meal thing. It's still in date. It was clearanced out for $10. And I think there's like 18 meals or something in here. So you would have the calories and the nutrition of 18 meals that you could mix up that would be stored indefinitely. And it does have a little flavor, although the meal replacements, the flavor ain't great. I know that. Um, instant rice. And that's just add hot water and it will last pretty much indefinitely if you store it in the mylar with the oxygen absorbers. Tea. Instant potatoes. Again, you can just add water. Now, if you do the complete ones, they're gonna have fat in them. They're gonna have butter in them and they're not gonna last as long. So you might wanna do just the potatoes. If you do the complete ones though, they will still last quite a while. You could probably get four or five years out of them. Uh, stuff like the dried hash brown potatoes. Of course, stuff like long grain rice and beans, everybody knows that. Pasta, salt, and spices. Put back some salt and some spices. If you store them in the mylar, the salt will last forever. It, it's a mineral. It'll last forever, but that will keep the bugs out of it and any keep the moisture out of it. You don't want to have to deal with that if you're having to deal with an emergency. Um, you can put back pudding mixes, the instant pudding, and keep it for years. <clears throat> um, I've got a lot of stuff here. I will put a list. Oh, non-fat milk. That's a big one. If you get the non-fat milk and you store it, like what we just did, in the Mylar with the oxygen absorbers, it will last 25 plus years. Make sure it's non-fat and you don't want to do whole milk and you don't want to do the butter milk because you're going to have some fat in that. But the non-fat dry milk will last indefinitely. And you know, like I said, I'm not trying to scare anybody. But unless you have literally had your head in the sand or you've been living in the cave, a cave, you know that things are kind of not going in a good direction. And you know about the shortages that we have been facing. You have seen the empty grocery store shelves. It is just good sense to have some stuff put back. And I hope everything I have put back gets used for camping trips with my family and for fun stuff. But in case we face stuff like we faced a couple of years ago, even a natural disaster like the flood that just happened up in Kentucky, there are still folks who are without up there. A good Christian has stuff put back for their household and for any stranger who might enter their door. So even if you don't need it, even if nobody in your family needs it, that doesn't mean that God's not going to put a stranger in your path who needs it. And it has nothing, storing food has nothing to do with a lack of faith. It has everything to do with faith. I, you know, I believe that the Bible and I believe what it says about trusting God, but I also believe that God tells us to discern the times that we live in and to prepare. God, nowhere in God's word does it say, be ignorant of your circumstances. Nowhere in God's word does it say 
to ignore what's going on around you. And if you read Hebrews 11, it starts out with, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And it goes on to talk about people in biblical, in the Bible, who had faith, but who prepared for big things and who took care of other people. So if you doubt whether or not you should be preparing, I would read Hebrews 11 and I would read Proverbs 31 because the Bible does teach us to take care of our family and to take care of those around us. Um, I will put a link to some of this stuff. I'll put a link to the freeze dryer if you want to get one. I did get an email from them that says that they are on back order, but they're also on sale because they're on back order. So if that's something you want to get to maybe do, I said stuff for camping or just stuff that you can put back and keep for a long time. Um, and I will have some links to some of the Mylar and stuff. And I do have a, an Amazon store that I've set up so that you can find some of the stuff that I'm using all in one place. I'll put a link to that Amazon store. And if you go there, it'll have all this stuff in it. So you can order it if you want to get stuff to put back. Stuff that you can go to the store and buy. Some drink mixes, some coffee, some rice, some beans, some oatmeal, some sugar. So that you have that stuff in an emergency. Like I said, I don't want to scare anybody, but the times that we are living in, I think it is necessary that we put some stuff back to prepare for a day when stuff is not available. We have seen that and that trend is continuing. Put your faith in God. Trust Him. He has you. He will get you through this. But the Bible does tell us that God helps those who help themselves. And it also tells us that we are to take care of our family. That's part of our faith. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. Share our videos with your friends. And until next time, remember to put God first.